Today I'm bringing something really different to you than what I usually do. For those of you who know me, I do a lot of retro computing and I'm very passionate about that. But I just got permission from work, um, IBM, where I am an associate partner and cloud architect, to share some of what I do at work. So what we're going to be talking about are, you know, basically DevSecOps, SRE, that kind of thing, and where they are today. So I call this digital native governance and management cycles, and you'll see why I call it that. So I'm going to start with a high level overview for people who are not familiar with this space. Um, and then I will dive into a specific example using Amazon Web Services, which is my particular area of expertise. Now, whenever you've got a lot of applications, you've got a few different things that you need to consider. And we bundle those generally into sustainment activities, so that kind of keeps the light on. Enhancement activities, so that's you know steady modernization. And then you've got the input of your stakeholders. So those would be everything from your clients, business leaders, product managers, all of the people who have some stake in the technology that is being acquired or created. That all goes into a backlog and creates a set of agile stories. And agile stories are a describable unit of work. It's, a, it's commonly called a, a user story. Um, and that user story says that I, as a user or as a stakeholder or whatever, uh, want this to be done. Okay, so those agile stories end up going into our Jira backlog. Jira is most common, but some kind of, of some kind of story backlog. And we've got our SMEs who work on it, and I've highlighted three SME roles today: an infrastructure SME, a security SME, and an application SME or developer. But there could be a lot more roles. Testers, for instance, are another great example. These three people are working alongside Gen AI, which is you know, increasingly becoming just very commonplace for any of these use cases, is to use something like you know, Watson Xcode Assistant or GitHub Copilot or any of these Gen AI, Gen AI type, type capabilities oriented toward code generation and translation to accelerate the delivery of these user stories and the creation of source code, test cases, infrastructure as code, et cetera. And all of that is going into a code repository, commonly GitHub. And this is where uh, I insert off often, and, and we at IBM do, um, the concept of service virtualization. This is an industry concept that's becoming more common uh, and making that self-service. So you're able to go and request deployments of these pieces of code in GitHub in full context, and I'll explain what that means. But really, it's about bringing the configuration and the test data alongside for, for those of you who, are, who want to jump ahead. So you're making this request. It's via a self-service portal or you know, via Jenkins or automatically if you're doing something like push on green. And then you enter a pipeline. So I've highlighted three pipelines, development, test, and prod. But you would have stage, UAT, all these other pipelines, depending. Uh, the first thing you would do is build and integrate. And I'll highlight the exact tools that would be used in the next slide. But for instance, Jenkins, things like that. That's what to think of there. And then we enter the next area that I don't see a lot of focus on, which is test data management. So test data management is where we're taking data from production right, scrubbing it of anything that's sensitive. So um, PII, which is personally identifiable information, PCI, payment card information, or any other type of sensitive information, um, and masking it in such a way that the data remains valid, okay? That's very important. And what that allows us to do, it supports that service virtualization, being able to deploy fully functional occurrences of these applications. So that test data management supports our test regime. You saw earlier where we checked our test cases into GitHub or into a source code repository. Those test cases include security, and those test and security results come back. And you can see that. Let me see if I can move my cursor right there. You should see my, my mouse there moving. Those are the test results flowing back into our SMEs, right? 
And that's what we call a test-driven development cycle. And that's kind of our, um, that's our tightest circle is the test-driven development. A, um, it's very common for a developer multiple times in a day to run a deployment, see the results within their development branch, right, their own branch of the source code. So they're not impacting anyone else until they do a pull request against a branch that other people are working with them in, like an integration branch, okay? Uh, which is where the test data management's important because in that integration branch, we would like to be able to reference working data that other teams are also working with that is reflective of what we would see in production. So that supports that integration activity. But prior to that, we're doing this test-driven development branch. And even as we go into integration and feature branches, we're hitting these, these test cycles real fast, okay? So next, as we move up through test and secure, okay, because very importantly, we're also running our security tests or security test cases using things like Veracode, checking the source code, doing findings, things like that. We go forward into our deployed environments. And these are development, test, prod. Again, those are the pipelines. And each of those ends up with a deployed environment, including dev, right? And these, we have these deployed applications. Doesn't matter where they're deployed, you know, at this stage. This is all conceptual. We'll get into the AWS specific example with Kubernetes in just a second. So now we're operating and improving these applications. And importantly, they're generating data. And the, the data they are generating can generally be categorized into three buckets. Traces, logs, and metrics. Logs can also be called events if you're an ITIL person, right? Because logs are collections of events in ITLEs. Um, those three data sources go into our data bucket right here. And then we generate insights using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And that's not, this is not AI washing. We've been doing it for years, okay? Um, so we, we generate insights um, both through uh, alerts, um, AIML, uh, all kinds of different analysis technologies. Turbonomics, a great example of a suite of tools um, that, that does this type of analysis, generates these insights. And then it, it feeds into actions. So um, in the AWS ecosystem, we have something called Ops Center, which tracks ops items. And those ops items can be security related from a tool called Security Hub, or they can be you know, actual ops items. Uh, there's also ServiceNow, which has its own model for tracking incidents and findings and things like this and the ecosystem thereof. Regardless, right, we open these items and they go back into that backlog. And this is what I call the SecOps cycle. This is our second cycle, okay? Now, the other thing that comes back at this point is that you can see because we have this single pane of glass, our business stakeholders have access to it. And they're able to check into the modernization backlog their own actions based on strategic insights from this single pane of glass, things like the performance, the number of users, any kind of feedback from um, end users, et cetera, right? So what this creates is that third cycle. I, I've heard it called the business-driven development cycle. Um, but regardless, that's where we're checking stories in and that's where we do continuous improvement. This is also where we would um, have FinOps. FinOps lives right there. Uh, we would have a FinOps tool often within the insights tier. Aptio um, comes to mind. Um, Aptio would generate insights that would turn into actions in the terms of, in, in example, you would have a resizing of a resource because it's over-provisioned. You may have um, up to a migration from one cloud to another because uh, there's, there's a less expensive option, though that's fairly rare even to this day. So let's go ahead and, and move on to the next slide. And you'll see I'm, I'm tiny, hi. <laughs> I gotta see myself, I gotta look around the camera to see myself because my camera's right here in the middle. So um, let's go ahead and, and go through this. So this is AWS specific. So we've got our three SMEs that we remember from our previous view. They're checking their stuff into GitHub. 
Um, now, you know, AWS has its own hosted GitHub. I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I think you should use GitHub Enterprise um, if you're a large enterprise, which is, is mostly who I work with. Um, you've got your employee self-service here. That can be AWS Proton um, is an example of a service that would be oriented um, directly toward more EKS-based applications. Um, a, uh, IBM has a solution here. Um, for self-service called DevOps Commander, which can support this. But regardless, you know, this can be API driven um, like Jenkins is, um, or, you know, something that is, you know, available to a larger range of uh, stakeholders, including people who are non-technical, um, even up to, you know, business users, uh, power users being able to request beta versions of your application to test new features upon your request. So very important, this concept of being able to request these modules in, in a simple way um, for end users. So we move into you know, Jenkins, Gradle for deployment. We have our pipelines. Um, and then we have highlighted here Veracode, SonarCube, Astra. Um, you know, there's a number of different tools that would be utilized. Selenium also is another one. Uh, to, to perform our, our testing at that point. And then once we perform that testing, we're taking those, sorry, we're taking those build logs and test results and pushing those into something like an Amazon CloudWatch, um, oops, sorry, specific to, um, you know, build logs. I do not see um, CloudWatch used often, it's, it, but it's a handy to refer to as a common repository. Nowadays, most of the time what you'll see is people pointed directly at um, the testing tools or there are integrations where you can end up getting these test results um, and build logs back into JIRA, um, which is very exciting. I think that that's really uh, where things are increasingly moving. Regardless, what you want is easy SME access. And I'm bundling the developers in with these SMEs because I think that true shift left means we have to view security, infrastructure, application, et cetera, SMEs. Um, all as peers, right, in the same kind of place within the ecosystem with access to the same kind of data, um, like build logs and test results. So however you get it to them, you need to get them back to these SMEs. Um, so we've gotten our um, test-driven development portion of the cycle. Next, we build our artifacts. Those would go into Artifactory. Um, we would also have Terraform here for deploying resources. Um, and then we've got our TDM test data management type functionality. Uh, I'm mostly familiar with the IBM capabilities here, uh, but there are others. Um, and we push the configuration, the test data, and the Kubernetes deployment, right, into, in this case, EKS, right? Um, alongside that, we can also have the mule deployment occur. Um, so that, that's a very common use case. So we've got that overlay here, the current. But that's where the traces, logs, and metrics I was referring to before are flowing into CloudWatch and open telemetry is where we're getting those traces from. Now, a lot of applications, especially legacy applications, will not be generating traces. But generally, you want to see traces being generated in any application that you modernize. Um, I, I consider it part of a minimum viable uh, refactoring, right? Um, the insights tier were see Security Hub, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and then Security Hub actually pulls from multiple services like AWS Macy, Guard Duty, right? Both examples of that machine learning type capability I was talking about earlier. You've got App Dynamics I've highlighted. Um, that's going to do a lot of your analysis of the environment. Um, but there's a lot of options in this tier. App Dynamics is not an AWS native service like most of these are. Um, you've got DevOps Guru, which does, again, machine learning driven insights against your traces, logs, and metrics. And then you've got Trusted Advisor, which is constantly analyzing your environment, looking for opportunities across finance, security, and operations. Um, so all of those are generating those insights. Those insights flow into our actions tier, which I've highlighted SSM Ops Center. Um, SSM is um, the AWS Systems Manager Suite and Ops Center is kind of the clearinghouse for all these events. Now, taking Security Hub and flowing it into Ops Center is not a common pattern, though it is one I've seen. It's one I ascribe to. I think that treating security and operational findings as equals and tracking their full life cycle in a unified tool that's native to the platform um, is definitely going to be the best way to get the best out of your hyperscalers. 
right? And then what you want to bring into something like a service now is really the, the tracked items. And that's where OpCenter is so great because as a native integration with ServiceNow to bring over the item, but still track the life cycle inside of OpCenter. So you get the most, best of both worlds. You get the ability to um, go ahead and work with others through ServiceNow, the collaboration, but you get the tracking local to the platform out of OpCenter. Now that we have our actions tier, right, we can go ahead and close our SecOps cycle. And then we can go ahead and also do our governance cycle. So earlier I referred to this as our um, uh, business-driven development cycle. Uh, another term would be our SecOps cycle, uh, our, our governance cycle. So there we are. Um, this is, you know, kind of my, my view of the world. Um, that I've worked with a, a lot of people at um, IBM on and, uh, you know, based on my previous work at AWS uh, and DXC. Um, and I would, I'm huge now, yay, hi. Um, I would love your thoughts. And this is, you know, wildly different um, from what I usually do. Like I said, normally I'm doing um, lots of retro computing. So for you fo retro computing folks, let me know, you know, what you thought of seeing um, this kind of content um, about, you know, DevSecOps, SRE, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I can dive a lot deeper into all these these topics um, and, and why, for instance, you know, adding things like service level indicators and service level objectives and a um, error budget would, you know, um, create an SRE overlay on this model. Um, so anyway, have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.